Hey guys, welcome to another uh, Computer Geek Fist. I thought today I would show you my HGI Octane, although as you can see to the left there I have a couple more. Um, I picked these up from Boeing. I have 14 of them now. Uh, 13 are original Octanes as you can see by this model here. This is an early Octane, you can tell by the original SGI design here. The later Octanes had the um, lowercase SGI logo and then after that came the Octane 2. The uh, Octane is the big workstation, not the desktop. This is the heavy duty workstation in the lineup. It comes after the Indigo 2 uh, but immediately precedes the Tezro. The brother to this, the uh, desktop I guess, would be the O2. The original Octane was introduced in 97 and it was pulled out in 2000 when it was replaced by the Octane 2. The Octane 2 has uh, uprated graphics boards, um, power supplies, things like that. They do share a lot of the parts, but um, like the front bus is a little quicker, things like that. Uh, and I believe the Octane 2 could have um, faster processors due to the increased bus speed. You can easily upgrade an Octane to an Octane 2 stats by replacing all the bits and pieces there. The code name for this was Speed Racer, by the way. And you can tell that because it's silk screened all over the damn thing. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's really kind of big. Uh, units uh, 15 inches high, 12 inches deep, and 10 inches wide. Uh, the big thing, though, uh, is not the physical size, but the weight. This thing weighs on the order of 50 pounds, depending on how stacked it is. Um, they, in the SGI manual, suggest that you require two people to move them. I can see why. Um, usually the way to move them would be to use these little vents here. You'll uh, grab your fingers on, lift. They suggest there should be one person on one side, one person on the other. Obviously when you're moving them solo you just grab it like this. However, they are heavy. Um, <laughs> I have hurt my back moving them, so uh, fair warning to anybody. This is a fairly ratty case, as you can see most of mine are. Um, they've been beaten, scratched, and uh, generally maltreated. The ride back in a horse trailer probably didn't help their appearance, uh, especially since they're all stacked on a pallet. However, hopefully I can make up for that today by doing a complete disassembly. We're going to strip this completely down so we can see all of the insides. Um, let's start by removing the front panel here. Uh, the action used to be a bit smoother, but like I say, a bit ratty. Come on, there. So you can see we have two uh, drive bays here. Um, these two are open, there's actually a third behind it. Uh, should you have a DAT, for example, uh, where you know, you'd be feeding something in and out, so we use the upper one, system drive behind here. We can remove the entire front of the case very easily. Again, a tribute to SGI's design. Not only is it aesthetically very attractive, but it's a wonderful design. The engineering behind it is superlative. We have uh, two catches here. And it simply drops out and comes away. There is... Um, apparently I've already removed it. Oh, here it is. Here's a little twiddle here. This actually carries the lights, uh, which shine through the case. Uh, it's just a grab on the sides and it removes. Um, obviously, I forgot to put it back on. Here we can see again the three drive bays. Uh, there's a passive backplane in the back there with an SCA connector. Um, you do need the SGI spud trays, of course, to make it work. We have behind this rather large uh, cutout here, um, or race surface, the router chip itself, uh, and then the sink and the fan that goes on that. We'll check that out in a bit because we're going to get to the back plane. I'm sorry, the mid plane. Um, I suppose we should flip it around and have a look at the back of it. Here we have the rear of the machine uh, from left to right. We've got the processor card. This is the rear of the fan shroud that goes to the drive bays. Banking slot for the PCI shoehorn, power supply unit, and then the XIO, and this has been partially disassembled. Um, 
these units, although they have an XIO bus primarily, they do have a PCI controller, and the PCI controller can be extended to a PCI shoehorn. This is effectively a box that slides in here that gives you, uh, I think it's four PCI slots, three full-length 64-bit and then one short 64-bit, one, two, three, four, and it just slides in here. The box itself sits at a reasonable way, so I didn't stick it in for this video so that it didn't um, hide other features. The uh, modularity, as I described before, is again readily apparent. A couple thumb screws, out it comes. The CPU board, we have audio left and right, uh, we've got digital, SCSI and external, uh, Ethernet, parallel, serial, keyboard and mouse. This is the release mechanisms, mechanisms for the CPU board rather interesting. A couple of screws, couple of release handles, that pops out. The XIO is slightly different, um, instead of like the Onyx 2 or the Origin where you have individual slots for the XIO cards, this has a central plane which the cards mount to. Um, I've already got it partially pulled out here, but you would undo the screws, pull on the release handle, and then the whole shebang comes with. On one side here we have a graphics board, on the other we have an empty XIO slot, and this is a quad ethernet and serial board. The um, connectors are much like the Origin and the Onyx 2s, these dreaded compression connectors. Let's have a closer look at the CPU module here. We have the actual processor module itself, which sits underneath this rather immense aluminium block. We have the ASICs that um, are part of the bus controller, and then the 8 RAM slots. The original versions of these could have up to 2 gigs interleaved RAMs, the later models 8 gigs. Uh, as well we have one, two, two logic controllers, tell us real time, sound, everything else. The um, bus design in this is worth spending a little time talking about. Most buses, most computers, work by um, a shared single bus where data is sent along the bus, the device is addressed, pulls that data on, the device will uh, push its response on the bus, goes back to the processor back and forth. So all of the devices, processor, RAM, yada yada, all share the same bus, or at least um, uh, PCI for example, all the PCI devices share that same bus. They have done something rather different with the Octane. Um, they've taken the really the supercomputer features from the Onyx 2 and the Origin series and they've implemented them here. The Octane uses a star router topology which effectively means think of it like an Ethernet network with a router or a switch. Each device is um, talking to each other on a four-way crossbar so at any given time the CPU could be talking to the RAM while at the same time the graphics card could be talking to the disk. I'm not sure why the graphics could be talking to the disk but there you go. They can talk simultaneously, they're not going to interfere with each other, it allows maximum throughput on the bus. It's a brilliant design. It is theoretically possible if you extended this you could even include the method of hooking up multiple octanes like the Onyx and the Origins do with, uh, or the Onyx 2 and the Origins do with multiple racks. Um, that is, <laughs> would be a serious hack, uh, but the possibility is there because the design is relatively similar, at least they're um, immediate cousins really. The two chips on the processor board here that handle this are the heart and the bridge. We'll look at those when we pop the sinks off but the basic way it works is the um, mid-plane has a router chip that handles obviously the routing so that when a call goes to the processor it's only sent to the processor the bus isn't tied up dealing with it. Uh, it's a packetized uh, protocol by my understanding. How about we Pull apart the CPU. <laughs> 